shortly after the reserves were created, the city of Winnipeg decided to draw its water from here and took whatever they needed, the land, whatever they needed, without our permission, without, no, without us knowing. Over 3,000 acres of our best land was taken. Our ancestors were, were, were taken. Our burial sites were taken. taken. The best land we had. All the gravel that we had was built, was, was used for the dike, to build a dike. So right now, we don't have, we never had gravel on the island. It's, you see where the ro our roads. We, got, we live under a curfew here. We gotta be home. We gotta be home by a certain time. You know, we, you, you missed the bar last barge. You're, you're, you're out of luck for tonight. In 1989, we signed a uh, tripartite agreement with the city of Winnipeg and province of Manitoba. Yeah. So their their obligation under that agreement is uh, to promote, make every effort to promote economic development. So that's their obligation legally. Our obligation is just, you know, any uh, exercise our jurisdiction on reserve to protect water quality. So that's that's the, that's the intent of the agreement. But 25 years later, not one job was created. We were once a thriving, very healthy community. That where the uh, intake sits now is where our community was back in the uh, early 1900s, many years ago. And and since the forced isolation and forced relocation to this area, it's been very difficult in terms of. Uh, just everyday living, everyday life in terms of not being able to drink out of the tap for water or not being able to cook out of the tap, you know, the water we need to cook and, uh, and bathing our kids. It's always a, it's always a risk or fear not, uh, know, not knowing if the, if the water is healthy enough to even bathe our young kids and children and elders and everybody here. and. The water from Winnipeg comes from where we are here today. Uh, and it's very easy to take that for granted. You just turn the tap on and the water comes out, right? I have clean drinking water. I have loads of drinking water and pay very little for that. Uh, here, they have bottled water that does not come from their lake. They're under a boil water advisory and uh, they've been trying hard to get a water treatment plant, but they've been stalled for a good long time. I didn't know that the water from Falcon Lake passes right through here uh, and goes into, it's diverted away from the intake, but the water from Falcon Lake flows into this, uh, into this lake and through this man-made canal which cuts off this community. So it's just a clear example of the cottagers from Winnipeg and elsewhere on Falcon Lake, they get what they want. They can travel freely, they can do as they wish, and it's at the expense of a small Aboriginal community. And that's just so symbolic of what happens in so many places in Canada. Yeah, I guess I've experienced a certain feeling of sadness when I think about the fact that, you know, what I take for granted, water, is what, um, is what people here don't have access to. My faith gets played out in wanting to care for the world and the world's people. So, you know, obviously the world is not being cared for, the earth is not being cared for in this water relationship. In our Christian faith, we hold water as important as well. In baptism, you know, we, we baptize with water. When we serve each other through the washing of feet, we use water. And, and to just think that the water that we use in our churches to do these holy acts is coming from a place where um, wrong has been done to a people just doesn't sit right with me. Well, just the obvious that water is a human right and if Christians don't care about the neighbors having their human rights, then what does that say about Christians? What does it say about Christianity? With the all-weather road here and access to gravel, you know, that bring the price down of a water treatment plant to this community reasonable cost so that yeah for, you know, if we address the access we'll, we'll address many issues we'll address the water issue clean drinking water we'll address the economic development part of it we'll be part of canada be part of the opportunities that are out there you, know, you can we don't have access to zero right now no clean water no economic development opportunities nothing mm. no, no gravel at all so mm. yes there's access and water